Hello, my name is Randy Ripke and I am the owner of Accurate Messages and the developer of Taskblur Cloud. In this video, we're going to learn how to include usage charts on your invoices and also include call detail reports which will automatically go out with your invoices. How would you like to have beautiful, colorful invoices which include a chart of the calls received on your client's account? Certainly, your clients will appreciate this information. Additionally and optionally, you can send a call detail report which will go out with your invoice. These reports are fully customizable, allowing you to select which fields of information your client will see. Let me show you the steps for setting this up. There are specific system requirements to take advantage of this feature. Currently, you must be using StarTel equipment and have a full StarTel API license. DAISY users are able to purchase a limited license API from StarTel for DAISY use. This is fine for DAISY, however, TaskBiller Cloud use requires a full license API. If you're not using StarTel, don't despair. Later this year, we will be modifying the charts to allow you to display any usage information currently collected by TaskBiller Cloud. We will be able to display a full year's worth of usage together with last year comparisons. This will prove to be even more powerful. Getting the chart graphic onto the invoice was the difficult part. Once solidified, we can do many more things with it. Let's start with the setup. From the main menu, let's go into File Maintenance and choose Templates. Scrolling down in the Templates section, you'll find two new options beside the, the DAISY logos, Call Detail Report and Call Traffic Chart. For those of you who would like to utilize this feature, I'll be copying these templates into your partition to help you get started. Let's start with the Call Detail Report. The editor is consistent with the others and resembles the Invoice Template Editor with a header, Report Information Block, Call a Detail Block with its own header, Detail, and Footer sections, a Totals Block, which I'm using for a summary, and a Page Footer. Editing the Call Detail entry and scrolling through the available fields, you'll notice all fields from the StarTel call detail record are available. To help tighten this data up, note I've used a cell and table height set to 8. You may want to play with this. Editing the totals block and looking at the available fields, you'll again see a list of column totals and averages available. Please let me know if there are any other analysis fields you would like us to add to calculate for you. Let me show you an example of how this looks. Here you see the header, report information, call detail header, and call detail. Scrolling down a bit, we'll see the footer for the page. If we scroll down to the very end of this document, we'll see the totals section and the totals block. Now let's see how to make a chart. This is the call traffic chart editing window. Again, we have a header, chart drawing area, and footer. I'm using the header to display my average time to answer. This is completely optional. You may display other information or simply leave it blank. The chart drawing area has a few options. Most important is the chart size and image size. The image size is the size of the chart, including the header and the footer, which will show on your invoice template. You can make your chart larger or smaller. Just be aware you may need to, to adjust the image size to properly frame your chart. Also, if making the chart smaller, you may have difficulty reading the chart legends, so just be careful. Along the bottom x-axis, you'll have dates. Along the vertical y-axis, which runs, which runs along the left edge of the chart, you'll have quantities. I hope to allow some editing capabilities for these legends later so we can adjust size, color, font, etc. But for now, just be careful. Note the chart size needs to be smaller than the image size. 
because the image size includes that header and footer. The last of the options has to do with the colors of the bars. Since these charts will likely be small, it may be difficult to, to determine which day of the week corresponds with the matching chart line. I'm using a light blue for every day, except for my day of the week, start day, which I've selected as Monday. My start day is a dark blue. This way, when I'm looking at the chart, the dark blue line always represents Monday, and from there I can figure out what all the other days are. I've also put in the footer a dark blue square next to the day, the word Monday, so my reader can know that the dark blue line represents Monday. Let's use the test button. This chart may look small when you're testing, but a 375 by 300 pixel image will occupy almost half the width of the typical invoice. This example can probably be tightened up a little bit. Notice the white area below my footer. I've learned it's also good to make these charts more wide and rectangular than square, just to make the days of the week easier to read, but feel free to experiment. I can't wait to see what everyone does to make this feature look great. Let's look at the invoice editor to complete this project. Scrolling down, I'm using the analysis section to display my chart. Note the hashtag call traffic chart hashtag. This is the merge tag name we're using for this chart. You'll need to insert this field into the position where you want your chart to display. Editing the table, I'm using more table settings options. And on the layout tab, I'm selecting the float table to the right. Then on the box tab, I'm using the 50 pixel push to the right or from the right to position this table correctly on my invoice template. Let's see how all of this looks. I think that's a pretty darn good looking invoice. Play with the size and positioning of the chart. You don't necessarily need to include the usage summary table. If you remove that, then the chart could fit nicely along the left edge of the invoice. Again, I can't wait to see how people use this feature to create some incredible looking invoices. Now let's see how it's used in customer maintenance. Here we are in customer maintenance on the options tab. First, you may not want all customers to have the usage chart on their invoice. There would be a couple ways of controlling this. First, if you're not using the analysis data, you could simply put the chart into the analysis section, as we did in the example, and turn it on and off using the existing include an analysis option on the options tab here. The other method would be to have a unique invoice template with the chart. You would then select the custom te invoice template on a per customer basis. This is really up to you to decide. Regarding the call detail report, you'll notice a new option checkbox here which controls this feature. It's a simple checkbox to turn the feature on and off. When distributing invoices during your billing period, all of this will be automatic. If the option is selected to include the call detail report, it will be attached to the email together with the invoice. If you're manually sending an invoice, you can decide to include the call detail report or not from the invoice distribution window, this checkbox right here. You may not want to send another call detail report if the customer already has received one. And you can scroll down and see our chart here and this nice looking invoice. When the customer receives their invoice, they're going to have two attachments. One's going to be your regular invoice, and the other's going to be their call detail report. I hope you uh, enjoy these features. They're really neat. I think the chart itself is going to make us really stand out from other billing software systems and other answering services, for that matter, by providing that nice detail to the customers. And also the call detail report attachment in a format that you can control and present nicely with your logo and only having the customer seeing the fields you want them to see is going to be very helpful. Uh, anything else, let me know. You have my contact information. Thanks for your time. I appreciate your support. Thank you. Bye-bye.